Thank you, Jesus. Mighty God, I give you praise this morning and I thank you, Lord, for your presence in this place and for everyone who is listening. I pray you receive the word by revelation today in the name of Jesus. Amen. My name is Pastor Sylvain Boudreau from Port McNichol, and today I'm talking about we, we have a mission. If you can go to Isaiah 55, 11 this morning, it says, So also will be the word that I speak. It does not return to me unfulfilled. My word performs my purpose and fulfills the mission I sent it out to accomplish. I'll read it again. This is from the Passion Bible. My word performs my purpose, God's purpose, and fulfills the mission I sent it out to accomplish. You see, salvation, healing, Financial blessing, generational blessing is forever settled because God's word is forever settled. Amen? So the promises that are in God are yes and amen, and they are forever settled. Hallelujah! That's what the word tells us, that it does not return to him unfulfilled. Therefore, when we read the word, we must apply it. We must speak it out in faith and declare it in faith. So important to declare the word of truth. Not what we're feeling, not what we're going through, not how bad things are, because there is darkness and great darkness. However, God is not surprised and he is using and will be using his church the believers to do his will. Amen? We know that God dealt with the sin problem in Christ's great redemption work. Amen? He died on the cross for our sins, for our sicknesses, for our diseases, for generational curses, for death, for it all. He died on the cross so that we could live an abundant life. Hallelujah. That's what Zoe means. In the Greek, that's what it means. Zoe, life, abundant life. And the scriptures in 1 Peter 2.24 and Isaiah 53, 4 and 5 also states that God dealt with sickness and disease for us in the act of redemption. That's where it says it in the word that we were healed in Peter and we are healed in Isaiah because Isaiah was looking forward to the cross and Peter was looking back at the cross. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, that your word is yes and amen and we receive it today. Mighty God. Now in Matthew 8, 16 and 17, let's turn there and read this. When the even was come, they brought unto him, they brought unto Jesus, many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick, all. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah, the prophet, saying himself, Jesus, took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Hallelujah. That is the truth of his word today. By healing the sick in his earthly ministry, Jesus was fulfilling Isaiah's prophecy. With his stripes, we are healed. And this is the interesting part. He healed and cast out demons before he even went to the cross and legally obtain redemption for us. Therefore, we see that it is the will of God that we be healed and whole and set free 
from any oppression of the enemy. Amen? Thank you, Lord. That is powerful. It is God's will to heal. It is God's will to set the captives free. Salvation is one of the benefits of redemption. And most of us believers understand that when we asked Jesus to come in our lives, we repented of our sin and we said, yes, I believe that you rose from the dead for me. We were saved. And in the same way, when we are believing for healing or for answered prayer, for financial breakthrough or standing on the word and saying, my family line has this sickness and this disease, but it stops here because of the blood of Jesus that is covering my whole family line from this moment on. Hallelujah. You believe that this morning? I pray that you do. Hallelujah. You see, healing is part and parcel of our redemption. Healing in every way I'm speaking about here. Physical, emotional, spiritual, financial, every bit of it. Healed and whole. If you're listening today, I'm declaring this over your life. That you would believe what the Word of God says and that you are are walking in breakthrough from this moment on. Amen? Believing the word of God, declaring the word of God is, that is true for you and true for me. Thank you, Lord. Say, healing in every area of my life belongs to me. Come on, say it with me. Healing in every area of my life belongs to me because the word says so, and the word of God is forever settled in heaven. Thank you, Lord. Turn to Luke 5, verse 12. This describes a leper. And in the King James, it says he was full of leprosy. It wasn't just a little mark, few marks here and there. He was completely filled with leprosy probably the last stages of it, when that leper questioned Jesus specifically concerning his will to heal, Jesus answered, I will. The New International Version says, Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, be clean. And Immediately, the word says, the leprosy left him. The New English translation translates this verse, Indeed, I will be clean again. Another one, it is my pleasure, be clean. And in the Passion Bible, it says, Of course, I am willing to heal you. Do you need to hear that today? Of course, Jesus is willing to heal you. Receive your healing. Hallelujah. Write in the comments, if you're listening today, what you've been healed from. Because Jesus is here. His presence is here. His spirit is here. Keep hearing this in your ears. Of course, I am willing to heal you. Hallelujah. The leper was completely healed. Thank you, Jesus. You see, most Christians don't doubt the ability that Jesus has to heal, but they doubt whether he will heal them. Well, the scripture says he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. His word does not change. We, as humans, we change our mind. We say we'll do something and then we change our mind. Or someone has made you a promise, perhaps, and they've changed their minds, right? So you can't count on certain people sometimes, but you can count on God. You can count on his word because he never changes. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! You know, Proverb tells us to ask for wisdom, to seek wisdom, 
and discernment. It's better than gold. It's better than silver. I believe that in these last days that we will know what the enemy is going to do before he attacks. Amen. That is discernment. And we'll be able to pray, to intercede, and it will stop the enemy in his tracks. Hallelujah. And discernment is obtaining spiritual guidance and understanding. It's a perceptive way of seeing things. Holy Spirit guidance. Ha. We need to see the unseen. Amen. And we will see the unseen. Just like Moses was given a rod to use, empowered with God's anointing, so we have been given his power in our hand to use for his purpose and his glory. Hallelujah. You are qualified through his sacrifice. See, the Holy Spirit is the third member of the Trinity. He's not less than because he's third, right? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are fully connected to one another. The power of God is in the Holy Spirit, and that power is in us. You know, now is a good time to shout. Amen? Hallelujah. But in order to receive these promises, we need to be renewed right here. And that's what Romans 12 tells us. And let me read it from the Passion Bible. Stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture around you, but be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. This will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life, satisfying and perfect in his eyes. Come on. That is so true. There are things that we repeat sometimes that our parents said or that we've heard growing up and it is not the truth, right? There's a saying in French and it says, jamais deux sans trois, which means never two without three things that happen to us. If there's two bad things, there's another bad thing that's going to come. And so those are things that sometimes we say, which is false. And we're calling something to ourselves. We need to call those things that are not as if they were. Amen. And those things that are not, if we call the wrong thing in, no wonder things happen to us, right? It's time that we watch what's in here coming out of here because our words either bring life or death. And that is scripture. So let us be careful. Living a beautiful life is living with nothing missing, nothing broken. And that's what the word shalom means in Hebrew. When they say shalom to each other, in essence, what it means is nothing missing in your life and nothing broken in your life. Praying the best, believing the best for you. You know, on Wednesday nights here, we have Bible study and someone brought up a pastor they knew that didn't believe in healing. Because when uh, the brother went to him and asked if he could pray for him, he had cancer. He said that Jesus heals. He got upset and says, Jesus doesn't always heal. I don't believe that he always heals. Therefore, he didn't receive prayer and he passed away. Now, this pastor believed that God allows sickness. That's believing that God says one thing with his word and does another. That's what it says. So, is God that way? Does God have a double mind? Not at all. We need to believe the whole counsel of God. And all of Jesus' ministry had to do with healing and setting the captives free and sharing the good news with them of heaven. Amen? Now, another story, Kenneth Hagin, 
was on his bed of affliction. He was paralyzed. He had been sick for a long time. And even after his conversion, he was still paralyzed. However, he believed in divine healing. There's the difference. And when he got a hold of the scripture in Mark 11, 23, 24, that says, For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Oh, hallelujah. And on August 8, 1934, when he received that revelation of the word, he walked again because he believed in divine healing. He started associating with full gospel people who also believed and preached divine healing. He liked to go to their services because he enjoyed the fellowship and hearing others believe in divine healing made his faith grow stronger. An open heart. Praise God. He was a former Baptist who believed in divine healing. Thank you, Lord. Now let's go to Acts 9, 32 and 35, where we see Peter, who was chosen by the Lord, who was a simple fisherman, an everyday guy, just like us, everyday people. There's hope for us. Amen. We can be like Peter, who believes in the word of God and does great things. Amen. Let's read. And it came to pass as Peter passed throughout all quarters, he came down also to the saints which dwelt at Lydda. And there he found a certain man named Aeneas, which had kept his bed eight years. He was paralyzed and was sick of the palsy. And Peter said unto him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ makes you whole arise and make your bed and he arose immediately and all that dwelt at Lydda and Saron saw him and turned to the Lord hallelujah the whole place turned to Jesus after they saw this man rise up from his bed of affliction when he stood up and he was whole completely whole hallelujah this story is about a helpless paralytic man named Aeneas. As the story opens, we see a man named Peter who's been scurrying from town to town, village to village, synagogue to synagogue, and anywhere else he could find to preach. Peter's telling people everywhere about Jesus Christ, the man with whom he walked, the man whom he saw die on the cross for them, the man whom he saw ascend from the Mount of Olives on a cloud of glory after telling his disciples, tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. That's in Luke 24, 49. And now Peter has come to Lydda. Can't you just see him as he finishes his first service and one of his brothers runs to him and says, Oh, Peter, we have a sad case over in Lydda, a man by the name of Aeneas. He's been paralyzed for eight years. Will you go see him? He can't come to the services. I can imagine him saying to Peter, I'm glad you've come. I've tried all the doctors. I've done everything I know to do, and I'm still not better. They say it's incurable. Do you have any ideas? I can imagine Peter thinking of how the Holy Spirit had been poured out on them in Acts 3. In his memory, I'm sure Peter is walking up once again to the gate called Beautiful, a wretched beggar sitting beside the gate. He stinks from all the stench from the animals all around him and of dirt as people walking by kicks dust on his hunched over frame. There this lowly man sits, 
shaking that little tin cup, rattling those coins in the bottom of it. I see Peter as he walks up to that beggar and says, I don't have silver. I don't have gold. But what I have, I give you. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. That's in Acts 3, 1 to 8. And Peter witnessed that beggar leap up and he walked that day, healed by the power of God. And now as he looks down to Aeneas, he says, Aeneas, I can help you too. He could have recounted the stories of Jesus coming up to them, walking on water. And when he went out to meet Jesus, he was walking on water too until he looked around at his circumstances and the waves and he began to sink. But the story doesn't end there. Jesus took a hold of me, he must have said, and lifted me up as we walked together back to the boat. After we got to the other side, I saw Jesus set free the demoniac of the Gadarenes. I was also walking with him when 10 lepers showed up and they were healed as they went. Luke 17, 12 to 19 says, we were walking down the road one day and saw a funeral procession in Nain. And Jesus went over and raised the man who was dead back to life again. Luke 7, 11 to 15. And Aeneas, let me tell you something else. Jesus Christ now cures you. Arise and walk. I'm sure that Aeneas' faith was so high at that point that he leaped out of bed. Jesus Christ, the one he believed in, had healed him too. And the word of God says that all of Lydda and Saren saw his healing and turned to the Lord. Glory to his name. And if we today will only believe what the word of God says without pulling back from it, just because it takes time, do not pull back. Persevere. Persevere and let your faith rise up as you hear words on healing like this, you need to associate with people who believe in divine healing and get the revelation of his word for yourself. We will receive blessing after blessing when we believe. It is when we refuse to believe that we don't receive. Arise today and receive your healing. John 14, 12 says, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these because I go to my Father. He who believes in me, most assuredly. That means with full assurance, without doubting at all what Jesus did, we will do. Before we accepted Jesus, our spirit was dead. And if you're listening today, if you're not sure that you have Jesus in your life, pray this prayer. Father God, I believe that Jesus died for my sin. Forgive me, Lord Jesus. I believe that you died and you rose again from the dead for me. And now your promises are yes and amen. And your word says that if I confess with my mouth and I believe with my heart that Jesus rose from the dead, I am saved. Thank you, Lord. Today, I am saved. So if you prayed this prayer, the Spirit of God is now alive within you because you've invited Jesus to come into your life. And now you will understand spiritual things like never before. And when you read the word of God, you will understand by the spirit. Because before our spirits are dead, we can't discern the word of God. But now that you have been enlightened by the spirit who now lives in you, you will understand 
greater things. Hallelujah. You will understand the promises of God. You will understand that you are not under curse anymore. You are under the blessings of God from generation to generation. Hallelujah. Generational blessings instead of generational curses. Jesus broke the power of sin on the cross and the curse is no more. He was moved with compassion. Everything that Jesus did was through compassion. When he spoke to the woman at the well, when no one else would speak to her and she would go in the middle of the day because she lived in guilt and shame and Jesus came specifically to speak to her. And he said to her, I have living water, come to me. And because of that love and compassion, she received him and ran back to her town and told everyone there that he had told her things that no one else knew. Because he said, go get your husband. And she said, I don't have a husband. And Jesus said, I know you've had many husbands. And he tells her, you know, three or four, whatever he says to her specifically. And she knew that he knew what was in her life. He spoke a word of wisdom in her life. Therefore, she went to get her town and all the men of the town came and they accepted the Lord. So you see, when we walk in the gifts of the spirit and we speak words of wisdom, words of knowledge that God gives us as gifts, then people will come to him. They will come to hear more of what the Lord can do for them. Amen. Are you ready to be used of the Lord? Ask him, Lord, give me wisdom. Give me knowledge, Lord Jesus. Give me the gift of healing, the gift of faith, Lord Jesus. I want to minister to people for your name's sake. Hallelujah. Now, let me tell you a story of Kenneth Hagin, who visited a woman on her deathbed. That was really powerful when I read this, and I wanted to share that this love and compassion that he had in this instance. So he went to visit this woman with his wife. While they were praying, the Lord spoke to him and said, tell her she is healed and to rise up. So he said, the Lord said to me that you are healed and to rise up. So she could only, she was really sick. She could only muster to take one leg out of her bed. There was another lady there then they helped her up, but they had to hold her up because she was so frail. She had seen many doctors, but they said to her that there was nothing else that they could do for her. So as they held her up, she could hardly stand. And Kenneth said, let's praise God together. And as they did that, all of a sudden, she pushed their hands away and she began dancing in the room and she was completely healed. And that Sunday she was at church. You see, they saw the frailty of this woman's frame. They also saw her faith when she mustered her leg out and they helped her up. That is love and compassion in action. And as they praise God, she was healed right on the spot. Hallelujah. Love, compassion, and faith. Now Malachi 4 verse 2 says, but to you who fear my name, which means reverencing his word, putting his word first, meaning not common, but holy and separate, but to you who fear my name, the son of righteousness will arise with healing in his wings and you shall go out and grow fat like stall fed calves. This speaks of health. When you read fat like stall fed calves, you're seeing healthy cows there, right? They're healthy and that's what the Lord is talking about here. When we're healed, he empowers us to tell others and pray for others. Years ago, I had colitis and the specialist said to me that I would never be healed of this 
that it's going, I was going to be, that I was going to be on pills. And then when those pills didn't work, I'd be on stronger pills for the rest of my life. But one day I believe the word of generational blessings. And I realized after meeting my birth family, that my brother had the same thing and he had an operation to get half of his intestines taken out and my other brother had symptoms as well and I realized this is a generational curse and I came against that simply in the name of Jesus this doesn't belong to me generational blessings belong to me therefore I received that blessing it didn't happen immediately but as I focused on the Lord and his word, it just left my body, left my body completely. So therefore, I know that God can heal incurable diseases. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, let me finish with this. Luke 4, 18. The spirit of the Lord is on me. Put your name in there because he's called you Jesus in you. Christ in you, the hope of glory, the spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind. That's healing to set the oppressed free. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And then it goes on to say to declare the way of the Lord's favor. Everything that Jesus did had healing and salvation. Thank you, Lord. One more, Revelations 1.8. I am he who lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of Hades and of death. The devil no longer has the keys of death and curse. Come on now. This is a good time to shout. I have the keys, Jesus says, of Hades or hell and death. He has them. <laughs> he took them when he went down after he died and he set the captives free and he took the keys of hell and death. Hallelujah. Jesus paid for our sin, our sickness. Our sickness is part of that sin factor. He is the curse breaker. Hallelujah. When Adam and Eve were placed in the garden, there was no sin. There was no sickness. There was no curses. It's only after they sinned. But then Jesus, the second Adam, came and recovered all. Hallelujah. We have victory over death. Thank you, Lord. So put your faith in Jesus today. Because we have been raised with him and the right hand of God has raised you and seated you in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. God raised us up. Say with me, he's a good God all the time. He has poured and is pouring his blessing on me. Come on, say it with me. He releases his power as I believe. I am an ambassador for Christ Jesus to tell the world that he is a good God and that he has come to set you free. Thank you, Lord. Make a choice today to believe everything that the word of God says concerning you. If there's any cells in rebellion in your body, I speak healing that these cells would get in line with how God created you. Healing in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, that you have showed us the way to righteousness and godliness. You have provided everything for us to walk in you. And you commission us to testify to all that we have life and resurrection, life in Christ. 
and we now walk in abundance of life and in generational blessings. I receive all that your word has for me today and I choose to live and hear what the word of God says and receive it by faith in Jesus' name for my life and my family's life. Thank you, Father. Well, we'll see you next time. Walk in his presence and his glory this week. Amen. Thank you.